in terms of my life growing up, uh, God was a huge passion of mine. My grandparents were sold out for Jesus. They were uh, music recording artists. I wanted to be involved in music just like Grandpa was. So I started getting involved in drumming and still pursuing that with, with everything that I had. And I noticed in 1996, early on in the year, I, I started to really struggle with making decisions. And it started to be a real distraction and, and I became obsessed with making the perfect decision. And I started to experience panic attacks um, and voices. So I started to question everything. And I had no idea that I was experiencing what I came to learn later, uh, experiencing symptoms of, of mental illness. Really, it happened so quickly. Like within three months, I was at the hospital doorstep looking, looking for help. They started running a battery of tests on me, uh, heart rate, etc., temperature. And I just said, you know what, you won't find the problem anywhere in here. I said, it's, it's up above, it's in my mind. And they admitted me to the psych ward. From there, everything fell apart. Predominantly, the thought with respect to mental illness is that, well, a lot of it is lifelong. You're just gonna have to learn to deal with these symptoms. And so medication became the, the number one route to, to getting better. And after about six months of me asking that question, hey, what's the plan? How do I move beyond this? How do I live beyond the illness, not just live with the illness? And about a year later, I started to experience symptoms again. Doris talks about noticing a change in me. Sean became a very different person. He was very serious. Um, he would talk about racing thoughts in his head, like he was hearing swear words in his head. I didn't really understand what that meant. I don't think I ever considered ending my marriage, but I did consider maybe leaving the physical premises because I was afraid now of what he could do if he was not in control of himself. So what I thought I should do though was to inquire of God how I should handle that. I became acquainted with Kenneth Copeland Ministries and I started watching their broadcasts on, and of course they teach on faith, they teach on healing, they teach on prosperity, they teach on the authority of the believer. So I was just getting fed. So Sean and I actually both started listening to um, Dr. Colbert whenever he's being interviewed by Kenneth Copeland on the broadcast. Fortunately, I had been hearing teaching on 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things, you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But the million dollar question becomes, well, what do you do when your soul is doing anything but prospering? I started to say, I am free. I am free based on John 8, 32. Started to speak my future, call things that be not as though they are. You know, I started to speak the future that I wanted, not the reality that I was experiencing. I started praying for a prosperous soul. I didn't want to just recover. Um, I wanted a prosperous mind to think well. So one of the things I had promised Sean in the hospital was, you know, I said, I know you don't like the medications, but I'm going to, I promise I'm going to try and find something else for us. I don't know what that's going to look like yet, but I'm going to look for something. Dr. Colbert was once again on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and he's promoting two books, Toxic Relief and Stressless at the time. and. So Sean and I had decided we would go to the bookstore and purchase these two books. And it didn't seem like a big leading from the Holy Spirit, but that turned out to be really the springboard for what we were gonna do next. And as I was just sort of mulling it through my head, I just really felt God saying, you need to go to Florida. Dr. Colbert took the approach, a whole life approach. We, we addressed spiritual issues. We addressed uh, exercise. So put me on an exercise program. Changing diet was a huge, a huge part of it, and really giving, giving some things up for um, a short period of time just to heal 
heal my gut. He talked about, you know, Sean staying on the medication, that the treatments that he was going to give Sean were going to help him, you know, get better, but the medications would help him basically st stay stable, you know, during that getting well process, because it was going to be a process. It wasn't going to be overnight. And he started to regain some of the things that he had lost. I really started to get into just believing for salvation through Christ's works and not relying on my own and started to really consume those scriptures, those, those materials that talk about um, faith righteousness versus just working it out and doing all these things to gain God's approval. I tried to deserve God's love, but in the end, it's a matter of receiving that. And so for anyone struggling in that way, there is help available. God is there for you. You are not the illness. You're a person and you're loved by God.